Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host here on the website that teaches you how to play mandolin and guitar. This week is Banjo Week. We're talking capo strategy today. I get emailed all the time about how to use your capo, especially when you're in a jam situation. Somebody calls out a certain key of a certain song. Maybe you're not familiar playing it there. How can you use your capo to help you? This is a big lesson. It's about 30 minutes. We're going to talk about all kinds of different positions we can play in, how to figure out where to put that capo, all that good stuff. If you're watching here on Facebook or YouTube here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website, BanjoBenClark.com. You can join as a Go Pick member, watch all my videos over there. There's hundreds of lessons, um, as well as downloading all of my MP3 rhythm tracks and tabs and all that good stuff. I'd be honored to have you on board. Let's jump into some capo strategy. Today's lesson is called Capo Strategy. I've got a capo, I hope that you do too, and we're both about to get some strategy on how to use this thing. What is a capo? Well, a capo is simply a tool that we use as musicians on stringed instruments to help us play more easily in certain keys. You know, there are licks that we learn, there are sounds and, and patterns that we learn that are only able to be done one specific way on a particular part of the neck. And whenever the key of the song that we're playing gets changed, we need to be able to carry those tools with us. And that's what a capo does uh, to help illustrate that. Imagine painting a wall, and it's easiest to paint a wall whenever the blank wall is right there in front of you. But after a while, we might have to start painting way up in a corner. Well, it's at that point that I would bring in a tool. I would bring in a ladder or a step stool that allows me to get back to eye level of the work that I'm facing so that I can use my familiar brush strokes. Uh, in much the same way, that's what a capo is going to do. It's going to bring our song back into perspective, allow us to use familiar licks, even though we might be in foreign territory. The primary tuning for bluegrass banjo is G tuning, or you might call it open G tuning. And what I mean by that is whenever we strum through our strings, if they're properly tuned, we're going to strum the notes in a G major chord. So really quickly, just going over the string tones. Our first string that's closest to the floor is a D note. Our second string is a B note. Our third string is that root note, the G. Our fourth string is an octave below the first string. It's another D. And then our fifth string is the highest string. It's a high G. So it's an octave apart from our third string. So whenever we strum all of those, we get the three notes in our uh, G major triad. Now, if our um, primary tune that we're going to be using on bluegrass banjo is open G tuning, I wonder what key would be most natural to play in. Well, that would be G, right? And that makes sense because whenever you first learn how to play the banjo and you learn how to play these rolls over these open strings, you're playing over a G chord, okay? So G, the key of G, is our home position right now whenever we play open. At least for now, we might change that up here in a little while. But the problem arises in that not every song is in the key of G. Even though some banjo players might want it that way, it's not there. So what we want to be able to do is take the roles that we know, take the licks that we've learned, take the chord positions that we know, uh, take the familiarity that we have in this G position, and we want to be able to move it into the new key that we want to play. And that's where the, the capo comes in. I want you to, to think about a phrase here about what a capo does. A capo allows you to play how you want to play, in whatever key you want to play it in. Let me repeat that. The capo allows you to play how you want to play, the familiarity that you want in whatever key you want to play it in. Okay, so I want to play it this way, but I want it to sound like that. Let's dive in more. Now we're about to put all this stuff into practice, um, but before you do that, I want to make sure that you understand something that's pivotal to really seeing the theory behind this capo strategy, and that's our musical alphabet. And the reason why we need to learn our musical alphabet is because that's what's going to allow us to know how far to take our capo up to play in different keys. We're going to need to be able to do the math in our head to determine the amount of space in between what we're used to playing and where we want it uh, to go. So very quickly, just a, a brief review, if you're not familiar with the musical alphabet, there's only 12 possible notes. Um, on, in Western music, okay, there's only 12 possible notes on the neck of this banjo or on a mandolin or even on a piano keyboard. And those, they're pretty easy to remember. Uh, there's less notes than there are letters in our alphabet, right? Uh, but the musical alphabet, which my four-year-old girl's already learned, it starts on A and it goes through G. Then it will start back over on A. 
Okay, so that's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's only seven. I said there's 12. Well, there's also some little increments in between these that we're going to refer to as flats or sharps. And I'm going to refer to them as flats because that's what we typically, uh, the, the nomenclature that we use in bluegrass. Okay, so we start out with A and then we have B flat. Then we have B and then there's nothing in between B and C. D flat, D, E flat, E, nothing between E and F. G flat, G, and then A flat. So there's our 12 possible notes. And the reason why that's important to understand is because that means there's 12 possible major keys that a song can be in, and that's it, okay? Uh, so now we can begin to do that math. But before we do that, we need to kind of see the musical alphabet on our banjo neck, all right? And this isn't something that you have to memorize right now, but you need to be able to figure it out. Now, since we're in the G position and we've, we're in open G tuning, we're going to start that musical alphabet not on A, but on G, just so that you can see it, all right? So we'll go G to G. Let's start here on this middle G string where we have G, and then for each fret that we're going to go up, we're going to go up one of these increments. So G to A flat. Let me get the banjo neck in view. G to A flat to A, B flat, B, C, D flat, D, E flat, E, F, F, or G flat, and then we're back to G. We're an octave above. Okay, so now I can look at my banjo neck. I know that I start with G, and I see all of my increments all the way up to the next G. This is going to... Uh, be pivotal, as I said, whenever we have to play something in B or maybe in D flat or whatever it might be. So before we dive in and really put this into practice, what I'd like for you to do is maybe go to each one of your strings, now that we know what they are, and just count up through the musical alphabet to figure out what those notes look like. So if we were on the D, if we were to count up the musical alphabet, it would be D, E flat, E, F, G flat, G, A flat, A, B flat, B, C, D flat and then back to D, okay? That's just good practice getting familiar with our fretboard. Now, let's put this into practice and um, look at how to apply the capo um, from a G major position.